All right, so I'll just do some brief introductions and then we'll go ahead and get started for tonight. Um, hello, my name is Emily Deal and I am the Outdoor Experience Manager out at Camp Ginger Cascades for Girl Scouts Carolina's Peaks to Piedmont. Um, my camp is located in Lenore, North Carolina, and our council, uh, uh, Girl Scouts Carolina's Peaks to Piedmont, we serve Central and Western North Carolina. And I see we have some friends hopping on. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so glad you guys were able to join us. Um, like I said, for this one, you just need a, uh, a rope or a shoelace. Um, we're going to go over, I have about three-ish knots and maybe another one at the very end if we have time. Um, but we'll go, go ahead and get started. Um, like I said, my name's Emily. Um, if you have any questions, I do have a friend that is online who will be posting um, either during or potentially after some uh, images for the knots. Um, that way, if you don't quite get it um, or you want to do it later, uh, if you watch this later, uh, you'll be able to kind of follow along and see those images and tie some knots with us. Um, so the first one that I'm going to go over is our pretty standard. It's a pretty basic knot. It's called the square knot. Um, it has a lot of different usages and we use it a lot in Girl Scouting. But it's generally just generally used to just tie two strings together or if you just need something that's a pretty simple, um, something to tie together. Um, it's not necessarily a weight bearing knot, which means you don't want to necessarily hold something heavy with it. But what you're going to do is if you have your string, um, I'll just do it kind of like, I know it might be slightly reversed, but you should have one end in your right hand and one end in your left hand. And then all you're going to do is you're going to put your right over your left, bring it around just like this. And now what the string that's in our left hand goes over the one that's in the right. And then you pull on it and that's a square knot. So I'll do it one more time just in case. So again, we're going to hold two ropes in either side. So this is our square knot. So you're going to take your right end or the, the rope that is in your right hand, put it over your left, bring it around, and it should look like this now. And then we're going to take the rope that's in our left hand, put it over the right, bring it around, and pull on it. Oh yeah, the eight knot. If you know the figure eight knot, that might be the last one we learned today. Um, I was practicing that one earlier. Um, but this one is our square knot. So like I said, that one, you don't ever want to put a lot of weight on it because it's not necessarily going to hold something. But if you need to make a string longer or you're just kind of tying something off, um, the square knot's really good for that one. Um, the next one that we're going to do is called a uh, clove hitch. Um, I'm going to teach you two different ways to do it. The first one is going to be if you actually have to tie the hitch around something. And then the other one is if you can just slide it on. So this one you may need to borrow. If you're watching with a buddy, you need to borrow an arm. Um, I'm going to be using a toothbrush carrier, travel carrier today. Um, from the last time that I went traveling um, to demonstrate what we do to get it on there. And so if you need to borrow a arm or you need to borrow, or if you have something you can tie on to, um, that's all you should need for that one. And again, this one is called the clove hitch. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead, and this one I may have to kind of turn around um, and show you. I'll try and do it this way, but that might be kind of weird. I may have to just turn slightly um, and do that. So this one, you want to go ahead and kind of roll over and just give me one second. I just want to make sure I'm teaching the right way with the clove hitches. So I'm going to make sure I use the um, right instructions as I'm talking you guys through it. Now the clove hitch, while I'm pulling this up, is 
two, it's essentially two hitches that we're gonna do concurrently. And this one is really good if you are needing to do, if you're out camping and you need to hang up a, hang up a rope to hang up your uh, mess kits. This is a great way to kind of tie things off. This is also um, a knot that we use. If you've ever been climbing at any of our walls and our, we always have to put the big, the rope that you climb on kind of goes over, but there's the ropes that are hanging. The way we do that is we tie a clove hitch on one end of the rope so we can pull it up and over kind of like this. And it just helps so we don't lose the rope when we're pulling it up and over. So this one's a really good, tight one that you can do. Um, and again, it's one that we do, like I said, it's one we use um, at the at all of, mo I would think most of our climbing walls. Um, so like I said, grab your rope, grab an arm or grab something that you have. So you're gonna go ahead and kind of lay it over arm. I'm gonna do it, hopefully do it successfully on um, my toothbrush holder. So you're gonna hold it like this. There should be one in the front and one in the back. So do we kind of see that? There's a rope in the front, a rope in the back. We're gonna take our back rope and bring it up and over. And I'm doing this a little bit backwards, so I'm gonna turn. Bring it up and over, so just like this. And then you're gonna bring it back around your object. And you're gonna go back up where you first came on. And it should look like this. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this one a few more times because I know that was a little can be a little fast. So again, have your object or an arm. Again, we're using my toothbrush holder. So you're gonna drape your rope kind of over it. So again, there should be one part of your rope that is in the front and one part that's in the back, just like this. We're gonna take the rope that's in the back and bring it over so it crosses our rope. And then what we wanna do is go ahead and bring it around our object, our arm, our pole, our toothbrush holder, um, just like this. And then we're gonna take it back up through the loop that we had made and pull it tight. So that's what that should look like. And you can pull it pretty tight. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm gonna do it one more time just in case. So again, your pole, toothbrush holder, arm, drape it in front, or drape, drape it just like this. So we have one in the front, one in the back. Your back rope is the one that's gonna go over. I'm gonna try and do this backwards, you guys. Over, <laughs> over your rope, back around, and then you're gonna just bring it back up through where you had put it on the pole and then you're gonna kind of pull it kind of tight. Hey, look at me go. So yeah, so this one again is good if you're doing, uh, if you're out at camp or you need to make a line real quick, you can do it on either ends. And it makes a pretty good just way to tie off your strings. The other way that you can do it, um, and this is the way that we do it uh, at the climbing wall is, and this one might get a little turned around via screen, so I may turn around. Um, this one is called the P and Q way. So what you're gonna do is you wanna make a Q and a P. And so if you can see on here, oh, I'm trying to figure out with my fingers. One rope should be in front and one rope should be behind. You guys kind of see that? How one's behind, one's in front. Just like that. And so in real life, one should look like a Q. So this is this this is my Q. And then one should look like the letter P, and that's my P. And you're gonna put your P in front of your Q. So did you guys see that? Just like this. And then again, you'll need an arm, toothbrush holder, pole. Rope, what we use on the, uh, when we're pulling ropes up the wall. And then you're gonna pull on that one. And I just dropped it a little bit. So again, just like this. So make a P, make a Q. So you're just kind of twisting it in opposite directions. The P goes in front of the Q. 
And then I'm gonna try and do this. Here we go. One handed a little bit. And then you just kind of pull on it and it'll make your clove hitch on your rope. Just like that. And again, and the reason we do this, like I said, when we have, when we're at the climbing wall, this is a, a, one of the mini knots that we use. Um, and it just, we do it on the end of our rope and we basically let us pull it up and over without dropping a rope because that's never fun if you drop a rope because then you have to get a big ladder out and re-put it all up. But those are the two different ways to do a clove hitch. So obviously one's a little bit, it's if you can't slide it over anything and then the other way is if you can, if you're able to slide it, you can do it that way. Um, but that is our clove hitch. The next one we're gonna do is the bowlin, the bowlin knot. Um, this one basically creates a loop at the end of our rope. Um, and it's also a knot that's easy to untie. So this one, again, is an easy one if you're doing, um, needing to do something with a line, um, if you're needing to tie anything up. And this one's also easy because if you're out camping or you're tent camping and you have knots and there's a big storm that comes, you want knots that you can easily kind of pull to gather your stuff and head out. Um, you don't want to sit there when it's like pouring rain, like trying to untie a knot. So... This one is the Bolin, and this one has a really cool story. Now, if you've done this one, you've probably heard like the bunny with the rabbit and that goes in and out of the, its little home. Um, I'm gonna teach a different version because the rabbit story confuses me, but if this confuses you, go ahead and um, you can look it up online. There's a lot of great online resources that do like 3D knot tying, um, but I'm gonna kind of teach you the way that's easiest for me to understand, but there's tons of different ways to learn knots. So with the bowlin, what we're gonna do is, um, I, it's the princess and the dragon story. And so what we need to do is, you're gonna take your rope, it's kind of just one big long piece, and we need to make a lake. So the way we make a lake is we take the bottom kind of, bottom part of our rope and just kind of fold it over. So this is what it should look like, you see, just like that. So this is our lake. This circle right here is our lake. And this is our princess. She's got some crazy hair going on today. Um, but this is our princess who's standing by the lake. Now, the other end of our rope is the dragon. So what's gonna happen is our dragon is gonna come up through the lake, circle around our princess, and go back into our lake. Now, once he's back into our lake, we're gonna go ahead and kind of pull tight. As tight as you can, if you can. And it should ha you should have a little bit of a loop. So I'm gonna do that one again, because I know that one's kind of, it took me a very long time to figure it out, and it was the princess and the dragon story that got it for me. So again, our rope is just kind of like this, just kind of long. Was this vertical? <laughs> vertical. We're gonna hold one. We want. We need to make a lake because in every story with a princess and a dragon, there's always some sort of lake. So we want to go ahead and fold over and make our lake. And remember, we need our princess outside of the lake. Then our dragon, which is the other end of our rope. So this end down here is gonna come up through the lake go around our princess and go back into the lake. And then this kind of, this part's the like, you know, can be the tricky part. You wanna go ahead and pull it as tight as you can. And it should look something like that. And now you have a loop at the end here. I'll do it one more time just so you guys can kind of follow along. Now this one, when I used to be um, just a seasonal camp staff member, um, we used to have games where we would put the rope around us and then do try and do the knot one-handed and it became like this whole thing for an entire summer was who can do a one-handed bowling. So once you get the princess and the dragon story down, um, that's definitely something you can practice <laughs> if you have a rope that's long enough to go around you and try and figure out how to do it one-handed. It was really cool. Um, I think I only ever successfully did it maybe twice and it was the like best day of my life up until that point. Um, 
but we'll do it one more time. And guys, definitely make sure that you post your pictures down below of all of the knots that you've done. Um, send us pictures of what you've done um, and which ones you like the most. So again, our rope is just kind of, we got one end in one hand and the other is kind of hanging down. So again, we got to make our lake. So I kind of, I don't know if this will help kind of turn sideways. So you want to make your lake. So you're just going to bring your hand up and over. So the one end of the rope should be facing or should be in front of our princess. If this is our princess, the lake is in front of her. And then our other end down here is going to be our dragon. And now the dragon's going to come up through the lake around the princess. And the important thing is he has to go back through the lake. So I know that there is a separate, um, we're making our other loop here, but he needs to go back into the lake. And then you just kind of pull on it, get it nice and tight. And then that's your bowling knot. Just like that. And like I said, if that if the princess and the dragon story might be a little difficult for you, um, or if it's not quite registering, this one it takes a while. Um, and like I said, there is a rabbit version um, that you can look up online. I just, the princess and the dragon seems to work best for my brain. So that's how I teach it because I can understand it the best. Now, the next one that we're going to do, uh, this will be our last knot for the evening. Um, and I'm watching the comments and I also have a friend watching the comments. Um, so if there's another one out of the square knot, bowline, or the clove hitch, um, either clove hitch, um, that you want us or want me to go over again, just go ahead and drop a comment and I can go back to it. Um, but the last one we're going to do is the figure eight knot. Now I'm going to kind of teach the super figure eight knot. So this is one. Uh, one of the climbing knots that we use. So when you go climbing, you're either going to be either using a double figure eight or a super figure eight. Um, these knots are weight bearing for obvious reasons. We are climbing, so we need to make sure our ropes are super strong. So to do the super figure eight one, which is if you're being clipped in is what you would use. Uh, you're gonna take your rope and kind of fold it in half just like this, so half and half again. And then the part that is a loop, you're gonna go, I'm trying to think of the best way to teach this. You're gonna go around the front and come back all the way around. And then you're gonna go through the big hole. And so it does a figure eight. Or what is the super figure eight? So I'll do that one more time. So half, half again. And you want to circle around, all the way around, grab your loop, and pull tight. Now, when you're doing climbing knots, a big thing you always want to do what we call dressing the knot. And so when we're doing, when we climb, we always want to make sure our knots look as pretty as possible. So you may sometimes hear, um, if you come to camp, what dressing the knot is. So that's all I'm doing right now is I'm trying to make it look as flat as possible. And as small as possible so you pull it really tight now if you're just doing a single figure eight one of the easiest ways I kind of learned how to do it is again we're gonna fold our rope in half and we're gonna do I think it's two twists and then you're gonna bring your bottom rope up and kind of pull on it and so it should look like an eight I'll do it one more time so fold your rope in half and twist, twist, and then you want to bring your rope up and through the hole into a figure eight. Now, doing it this way, if it looks like a pretzel, that's not the right way. It should look like an eight, a figure eight. Um, this is another one when we are doing our trainings and when we teach girls how to climb, we usually try to teach them at least one of these, uh, one of the eight knots so that they understand. Um, sometimes it makes them feel a little bit better. So um, if you're looking for anything to do this summer, uh, we definitely have our summer camp options that we have going on. You can go to uh, www.camplikeagirl.org and just see all the different options we have going on. We have a, we have everything from three-day sessions to week-long sessions and everything up to our older girls who wanna be counselors in training and those are two-week sessions. Um, 
and they're super fun. Um, Camp Ginger Cascades, like I said, is in Lenore. We have Camp Pisco, which is in Brevard near Asheville. And then we have Kiawe Program Center with the Circle C Equestrian Center that is located in Sophia, North Carolina, near Greensboro. Um, so definitely come see us this summer. Um, yeah, and like what my friend said, if you want to see the square knot, um, either versions of the clove or different ways to do the clove hitch, the bowlin or um, either the super figure eight or just the regular figure eight knot. Um, I'll stay on for just a minute or two longer. Um, comment below and I'll be happy to go back over those. And then I believe once um, this is over, we'll post the pictures of what I was using to reference and just what I thought might be easier to understand to tie the knots. Um, we'll post those pictures below so you can do them afterwards or you can share this video with all of your friends and they can do those as well. And don't forget to post pictures on this so we can see how awesome you guys did. And if you have any questions or like I said about knots or if there's anything you want to know, let us know. Um, and make sure you check back in with us. Um, make sure you check back with in us the rest of the week uh, at 4 and, 4 and 7 p.m. We have lots of activities planned for the girls. Can you do both the, yep, the figure eight. I sure can. I don't know the alien story for the figure eight, but I would love to hear it. So for the figure eight, so the double, like I said, the super figure eight, this one is the, well, I consider easier because it's just like two little things. So you're gonna half your rope and then you wanna half it one more time. And you're gonna take the, not the, not the end that has these bits, but the circle end or the looped end. And you're gonna go around, all the way around. And then you're gonna go back through this big loop. So you're gonna take your hand, grab it and pull. And then remember what I said about dressing. So we wanna come back in and just double check that our knots are as pretty and as little and as flat as possible. So that's our super figure eight or double figure eight. And then, so the way that I do just the regular figure eight is again, just kind of fold my rope in half. So I hold it with the looped end and then I give it so one, two, and then I grab one end of the rope and pull it through and just pull. And then that's the figure eight. I'll do it one more time. So one, two, and pull it through. If you're ever going hammock camping, the figure eight can also be good if you need to, um, or the super figure eight creates that loop and you can hook your hammocks up. All right, friends, I will, I'm gonna stay on for just another minute. Is there any other knots? Like I said, we did the square knot, we did the clove hitch, we did the bowlin and the figure eight. Um, so let me know if there's one you wanna see and don't forget to share this so that uh, all of our friends can see the kind of knots that we're doing and make sure you post your pictures below with your favorite knot or if you learned a new one, um, let us know what new one you learned and um, yeah, just post a picture about it. So I'll wait just in one, about another minute or so. There's another knot you would like me to, or one of those knots that we just went over. Square knot, yeah, I can definitely do the square knot again. So if you have your rope, if you have your rope, you're going to go ahead and take both ends. So you want one end in your right hand, one end in your left hand. And so the way that I teach it is you're going to take your right over your left and you're going to bring it around. And now your left rope needs to go back over your right rope and bring it around and pull on it. And then that's the square knot. I'll do it one more time just so you guys can see. So again, 
We're gonna put one end of our rope in either hand. So we have one in our right, one in our left. And so our square knot is right over left, bring it around, and then left over right. So left over right, and bring that one around as well. And pull on it. And that's our square knot. So that's how I always remember it, is right over left, left over right. And if you watch SpongeBob, it's right over left, you can bring it around town. Ooh, I didn't pull that one tight enough. Tight enough. All right, any other one that you would like me to go over? The bowline or the clove hitch? I think those are the only two I maybe haven't gone over just yet. Or over a second time. Or does anybody have any questions? Well, um, while well, I let everyone kind of think about if they have any lingering questions about knots um, or if they have one I want, want me to go back over. Um, again, don't forget, don't forget, make sure you like and subscribe to the Girl Scouts Carolina's Peaks to Piedmont page. Uh, that's how the best way to keep up to date with all of our information and to so you can get notifications when we do go live. Like I said, for the rest of the week at between or at four and at seven, we're going to have different activities for everyone to log into um, and just keep everybody engaged while we're at home right now. Um, and then don't forget, you can also do watch parties. I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but for the rest of the week, if there's something or a program that you're really interested in with your troop or other friends, they don't necessarily have to be Girl Scouts, they can go ahead and share. You guys can do a watch party and do everything together. Um, and kind of that way you're still keeping your Girl Scout family connected and together. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions or again, if there's anything I can go back over, just let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys, I'm sure, at some, another point this week. And thank you so much for logging on to do Knots with me. Um, it's been really fun. And I will see you guys later this week, and I will talk to you later. Bye!